Why, hello there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Socket Sanctuary. Not everybody is aware of this card, so let's delve into the Overlooked 300 series by NVIDIA. What happened to the 300 series, and, well, how do they game? To answer those questions, we need to know a little bit more about the card itself. The GT330 is the second most powerful card in NVIDIA's long-forgotten 300 series of cards. The 300 series was released in early 2010, about one month before they released their new 400 series Fermi cards. The 300 series cards, like this one, were never available for retail, sale, and were only ever found in OEM systems. This particular card was pulled from an old Dell. The 300 series of cards are rather unique. Not because they were OEM cards, the NVIDIA 100 series is similar in that aspect. The reason that they are unique is that they are the only lineup of desktop GPUs by NVIDIA to support up to, but not surpassing, DirectX 10.1. Most cards up to this point that were made by NVIDIA only supported DirectX 10, whereas at this point the old ATI cards had almost always supported it and were now supporting DirectX 11. The long and short of it is, this is the oldest NVIDIA card that can technically play DirectX 10.1 titles like Overwatch, which we will be testing. Now a little bit more about this specific card. This card, like all 300 series cards, are based off of the Tesla microarchitecture. This specific GPU is a derivative of the GT420's GT215 GPU that comes equipped with 96 cores at a 550 MHz core clock and a 1340 MHz shader clock with 1GB of GDDR3 with a 128-bit memory bus and a 25.3GB per second memory bandwidth. Numbers are great, numbers are fun, but what does that actually correspond to in in-game performance? Let's find out. The first game we tested was the ever-addicting Skyrim by Bethesda. This game may be an old game, but the card is even older and was never really that high-end. And even still, it manages to kind of play it at 1080p medium settings. With a 29 FPS average, this game would be much more suited to low settings or the same settings at 900p. Either way, if you are a devoted low-end gamer, you could probably pull off 1080p medium settings on this game because in less populated areas, the frame rates would be much better. In Grand Theft Auto V, we tested the game at both 1080p and 900p low settings. At 1080p, this game is probably unplayable even for low-end gamers. With an only 21 FPS average, 900p is where it's at due to the higher frame rate for the low-end enthusiasts. That being said, I would never recommend you seek out this card and use it in a system, as there are better out there for the price. Even so, at 900p, the frame rate was better, but if you prefer even higher frame rates, a lower resolution would work best for you. In CSGO, we managed a decent enough frame rate at 1080p medium settings. For CSGO enthusiasts, a 76 FPS average might not be enough, but for a filthy casual like me, it fits the bill. Drop the settings down to low and you'd get a much more playable and competitive frame rate. In Rocket League, we actually managed a pretty good frame rate at 1080p performance settings. With a frame rate that rarely dipped to 29 and played at 36 most of the time, you would have an adequate gaming experience. Especially considering its age, it's not a bad little low-end card. The final game that we tested was Overwatch. Although the game's official minimum requirements are an NVIDIA 400 series, the DirectX 10.1 capable GT330 manages to run this game. However, the Tesla architecture struggles with it. We had to drop the settings to minimum at 1024 by 768 before we got a playable frame rate. Even at these low settings, we only managed a 32 FPS average, with it dropping as low as 25 in combat. For those wondering, the low frame rate is calculated by deleting the lowest recorded frame rate, which is usually an outlier. The low frame rate was hit at least twice during this benchmarking session, meaning you will likely see frame rates this low during your gaming adventures. 
Anyhow, the card is still playable in this game, but just barely. The only settings that could be dropped to improve frame rates would be render scale, and doing this makes the game look like a blurry mess, but the decision is up to you. So there you have it, the forgotten GT330. Basically a GT240 with a DirectX 10.1 capability. Not high end in its day and certainly not high end now. Can it game? Yeah, I guess. Would I go out and buy one if I saw it again? Not really. I guess that will be it for this week's episode. If you like these sort of weird tech videos, make sure to subscribe or hit that bell to get notified of any future videos. Or maybe share it with a friend that likes this sort of thing. At any rate, thank you folks for watching. May your frame rates be high and your prices low. And I'll catch you folks next time.